The Vikings have had a number of players make the Northern Territory team a few years in a row. So you've got the Junior Sayanas and the, the Shailen Parais and the Celesi Tumalolos. You've got uh, Tui Junior, uh, Tui Ford Junior. But uh, I tell you what, all three, all three of those four names were on the field a couple of weeks ago when uh, when the Vikings were beaten by, comprehensively beaten by Westies. And the only person missing out of that group of four was was Shailen Parai. So. You know, whilst all four of those players are absolute champions in our local competition and at a, at the, at a higher level as well, uh, I don't think I've seen the Vikings uh, beaten so comprehensively before. And uh, it's uh, Shailen Parai was certainly the man that was missing from the, the cast of four that could have helped help them there. Uh, United, a fantastic team steeped in history, one of the founding clubs and. You know, some of the, the players' mums and dads and granddads that uh, you know played themselves 30 and 40 years ago, still down on the sidelines cheering on. So quality players for United Magpies. I mean, over the years they've had some fantastic players and probably uh, well well represented in the Keegan Medal. But uh, this year, their uh, their captain coach Phil Childs is an absolute standout for them. He um, whether he's playing in fullback or in halfback or or leading from the front, Phil is um, Phil is absolutely doing his uh, doing his best to make sure that that, that club is uh, is doing the best that they can. They miss him when he's not there, but um, but one man doesn't make a team. He's got a couple of young fellas there, the uh, young Toy Ford and Toa, and and uh, he has Matt Hughes helping him out as best he can. We've got uh, Wayne Davis is making a fantastic comeback, and Warren Kunoth very consistent on the wing. I'm sure we'll see a couple of strong performances out of them before the the finals this year. They won't want to go out on a sour note, so hopefully uh, 2017 might be a bit brighter for the Bulls and the and the Magpies, but uh, I, I don't think we've seen the last of either of them this year either. The uh, the West Dragons are a, a solid team, though. You can never, never discount them. I mean, they're very well drilled, they're very well practiced. They have a number of really good quality players as well. The youngest of the, the Shelford brothers, uh, Adrian Shelford, uh, he's, a, he's an absolute powerhouse. He's, uh, he's gone from strength to strength over the last couple of years, you know, coming from, uh, from second row up into prop. And uh, you know, for the next couple of years, he'll uh, probably be the dominant prop in our competition. Uh, but then also for West, you have uh, Wade Nibs and, uh, and Peter Nibs playing there this year as well. And uh, both Wade and Peter have had uh, fantastic success on the East Coast as, uh, as rugby league players. But you can see every time there's a competition, every time there's, there's work on the ball and off the ball, Peter Nibs is the man that's doing the work. He's, he's fantastic behind the line, he's fantastic with the ball in the hand, whether he's setting up the next play. Peter Nibs is just a, he's an absolute competitor and it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to watch him play football week in and week out. The Bulls, although they haven't, um, they haven't really worried the Vikings this year. They've worried the the Dragons a number of times. On a couple of occasions, they've come really, really close to uh, to taking the game, but they just haven't got over the line yet. They've got a uh, a plethora of uh, quality players. They've got uh, forwards. They've got backs. They've got backs that play like forwards. Young Joel Goldring has the heart of a lion. He's scored a dozen tries this year. Uh, usually plays out of fullback, sometimes out of uh, out of hooker, sometimes in number six. I think he even uh, might have wore a number seven at one stage this year. I'm not sure if that worked out too well for him. Um, in the forwards, they've got Guy Hodgman and, and Jay McGuinness. Julian McGuinness are always solid. Jay's been playing in the centres most of the year, but his um, his position is is definitely second row, playing next uh, next to Guy. You know, Guy is taking two or three hit ups out of every five or six. So. Uh, He's an absolute outstanding player in their in their forward pack. Uh, the the player that um, that can can win or make or break a game for the Bulls is definitely definitely Lance Poaching. The future of the game is definitely in the development of our juniors. Um, 
you know, sixes and eight-year-olds, it's, it's great to introduce those kids to the game and, and plant the seed in their mind of, uh, of playing football for the, the rest of their lives and making great friends and, and being competitive. We've got um, an increase in participation. Oh. Um, Standard-wise has been, been improving. We've got some good coaches in all of the age groups um, and good turnout to training. So, yeah, I think it's been a positive and hopefully we can grow on that next year. 12-year-olds, 10s and 12-year-olds is where they start to become competitive and start to really learn the game. And, and 14s and 16s is where, where people start to make allegiances and alliances with, with clubs and, and teams and, and playing for their mates and their captain and, and, their, and their coaches. Where do I see Rugby League? I see Rugby League in a really strong position in town in a few years' time. I think um, uh, we've, we've sort of tried our best over the last five years to keep our head afloat. Um, but with a few more volunteers involved this year and a few more people to help out, uh, I, I really think that there's going to be big resurgence in uh, in committee level and volunteer level rugby league over the next couple of years but we've got to get people through the gate and to get people through the gate we've got to get the 14s competitive we've got to get the 16s competitive we have to have a really competitive and strong 18s uh, competition and all those three competitions will feed into a really solid uh, really young A grade competition that uh, that will get people in through the gate. And the more people that come through the gate, the more mums and dads want their kids to play and, and it becomes a, a circle of, uh, of uh, a continuous rugby league. It's all about getting more people involved and, and keeping the ones that we do have involved and keeping it exciting for, for everyone to watch, whether it be on, uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, or, or down at the ground watching it on the sidelines cheering for your team.